Hi there, good afternoon and welcome. You're watching the Mutual Fund Corner. I'm Mangla Malu. With me is Sumera Abdi in the MF Corner. Every Tuesday and Thursday, remember, we answer all your queries related to mutual funds. Actually, this is the best time given the sort of weakness that we're seeing in the markets. How and uh, uh, how can you how can we address your queries and help you benefit with the power of compounding is what we keep an eye out on. As of now, let's get a check on the markets. Uh, it is fairly volatile as far as the frontline indices are concerned. The stocks of the day we have Tata Motors down 16% and very decently we got sale which is off the high point of the day. As we take a look at individual stocks, first up, all the top stories that we're tracking this afternoon. Volatile moves in the Lal Street. The Sensex and the Nifty give up morning gains but are off the low point of the day as well. The mid-caps continue to underperform. The market breadth firmly in favour of declines. Rupee continues to depreciate. The currency hits a fresh record low today against the US dollar. News of lower dividend divestment flow to central government hurts bonds as well as the rupee. IMF cuts its global growth forecast for 2018 to 3.7% from 3.9%, citing trade disruptions, retains the India growth forecast for the next year, but says US and China will grow slower than expected in 2019. The two stocks on our radar, Tata Motors and Tata Motors DVR, lose over 15% each uh, after weaker than expected JLR sales for September were reported. The additional negative is the announcement to shut down its Solihull plant in the UK for two weeks after China sales have come in lower by 46%. Captive power producers, they've written to the PMO about acute coal so shortage. They have requested immediate resumption of supply for aluminum industry. Nalco tells CNBC TV18 they're paying additional 40 to 45 crore rupees to secure electricity, while independent power producers say they too are facing coal shortage. All right, uh, just keep an eye out on individual stocks. The Nifty currently is lower as we speak. The rupee also was weaker. So uh, I'm just trying to pull up a couple of individual stocks. I think uh, there is also this news that the government will defer payment of about 10,000 crores uh, oil subsidy to the next uh, fiscal. This is the news that was there in the morning itself, negative for oil marketing companies. And uh, the market breadth, that one should come up for you. We opened with about three stocks in uh, 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 in the green with against one stock as against one stock in the red. And now as we're speaking both the lines the intersection uh, uh, has widened and the red line is above the green line by a fire by a fair margin two stocks in the red as against one in the green the nifty down by about 31 points the sensex closing in on a hundred point cut as we speak both uh, the indices the nifty and the sensex while they're off the low point of the day they're also off the high point of the day it is the mid cap index which is lower by about a hundred points and uh, we're trying to see a couple of stocks which are under pressure right now. HUL, remember the company reports its results uh, uh, just by the end of this week, 12th October is when they announced their second quarter numbers and the stock is off by about 25% from its uh, uh, highs, uh, uh, 1,808 or thereabouts where it was just ahead of the previous quarter's results. So about 20% of the highs, 1,507 on Hindustan Unilever. The, the expectations are of about 8 to 10% in terms of volume growth for the second quarter. Uh, FMCG stocks are are not doing well by and large. Godrej Consumer, two of the high point of the day. We have Pity Light, which is sitting with a cut of about 7%. And uh, as we speak, we're seeing some cuts come by on ITC as well. That stock has given up about 2.5% from the high point of the day, has a fair amount of weight on the index. At the low point is ITC. 35 to 4% is what the street is expecting in terms of volume growth this quarter for ITC. However, valuation concerns plaguing all the FMCG stocks. Maruti Suzuki, that one should come up for you as well. Not just FMCG, auto stocks not doing too well as well. We already spoke about Tata Motors, Maruti Suzuki too sitting at the low point of the day. The mid-cap end of things not looking too good as well. Uh, would be interesting to see how the options data is panning out. Remember this morning uh, uh, the maximum open interest was at that 10,000 put and 10,500 call. But as we speak, we are seeing some action on... Uh, uh, the 11,300 call option, actually uh, some, some freak moves in the option space as well. But uh, with that, I think uh, we have Sumera with, uh, uh, we, we have Sumera and Feroz Aziz sitting in the mutual fund corner. Sumera, over to you. 
Mangalam, thanks very much for that. Firoz Aziz of Anandrati Financial Services joins me this afternoon. Hi, Firoz. Good afternoon. But, uh, you know, before we start answering the queries that have been coming in from uh, many of our viewers, I wanted to actually ask you because there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, almost a panic situation as far as a lot of investors are concerned because they're seeing many of their funds taking quite a bit hit, at least in the last, uh, you know, two, three weeks that we've seen in terms of a market fall. I mean, what's the solace for these investors? How do you actually convince them to keep the faith to continue their SIPs going when they see this kind of a fall in their portfolio? Uh, see, I think, Sumira, uh, these are the times where diversification has a large role to play and it has actually saved people a lot of fall. When almost half the uh, listed stocks are 50% down uh, in the last, uh, from their peaks, uh, I think mutual funds have made sure that the fall is restricted uh, anywhere between uh, 10 to 15% for this calendar year. Uh, and the extreme funds have lost 20, 25% on the small cap category, especially this month, which is October, where you've seen a a huge uh, selling, almost about 9% on Nifty. Uh, funds have fallen 6-7% on an aggregate. Uh, so, uh, like we always, uh, as as investment uh, experts or, or uh, people who give you an opinion on investments, we look at personal finance from a long-term perspective. This is exactly the day why that is being always said, saying that you should wait for the long run. You will have to pass through this painful short term uh, to be able to get to the long term. And if you are not going to stay the course, uh, it's for sure that you will be uh, getting overwhelmed with the emotions of fear, especially today. But, you know, Firoz is, um, I mean, I'm just playing the devil's advocate over here. It's not just, you know, the last uh, few days odd. I mean, even uh, you look at, uh, uh, you know, some of the funds' performance, say, since the budget, and there as well, we've seen uh, quite a few funds and actually some of them very, very popular names who've seen significant falls. I think uh, the f fund which has fallen the most is the DSP small cap. Of course, it was a very popular fund for the previous year. Uh, ABSL small cap uh, pure value, uh, ABSL pure value. There are several funds who have fallen between the range of 25 to 20 percent. Uh, I think uh, that's not a small small fall, uh, especially uh, when you're looking at one financial year, uh, one calendar year, and where where there has been a lot of fall from the small cap space. I think uh, these these funds have of course fallen so uh, coming back to the point of how do we stay the course is if you bought yourself a seven eight mutual fund portfolio uh, of not one fund but seven eight then the aggregate falls on about 20 portfolios as a sample data we analyzed is about 11 percent for this financial year uh, so uh, and and about 12 percent for the calendar year so sumira a point one which i'm making to the viewer is you have to buy mutual funds from a long-term perspective Point two I am making is if you bought yourself seven to eight mutual funds uh, for a rainy day like today, uh, you will be able to make sure that you restrict your fall uh, to under 10-15%. That's uh, true, actually, Feroz. But, uh, you know, also give us a sense of what you're seeing on the ground because, I mean, at least as of this month, at least as of the data that we have for September, it doesn't look like retail investors have thrown in the towel just yet. But, you know, the SIP, if they've been stopped, we'll see the lagged effect only perhaps closer to November. Uh, what's the sense you're getting by speaking to investors, uh, I mean, uh, you know, your clients? Um, is there a panic? Are people actually redeeming? Yes, I think, Sumera, uh, there's no denying that. Uh, if you look at the trend uh, from SIP, uh, stoppages are going to go up significantly. Uh, like you said, it's not going to happen right then and da now. Uh, but, but I think November, December, you will see uh, slippages of SIPs and even the redemption of the accumulated amounts. Uh, uh, why, why is that? Because one, one and a half years or two years of SIP returns uh, have been showing negative and that's a long period uh, from a retail uh, investor's perspective. If he or she sees negative on a one and a half, two year time frame, I think their patience level significantly drops because these are not old time investors, especially the money collected from the mutual fund industry over the last uh, year and a half or two has been from fresh investors, not those seasoned players 
investors who have seen ups and downs. Uh, so most of these SIP investors are seeing a downtrend uh, for the first time in their lives and, and their, uh, their behavioral patterns uh, are not going to be very, very rational. Uh, so you're right, Sumira, I think uh, there is going to be a, a lot of stoppage of SIPs, especially uh, with the new regulation on the distribution framework uh, and commissions to be distributed. I think the SIP number uh, from 7,700, 7,900 crores a month uh, is bound to come back down uh, for a while at least. Yeah, and uh, you know, if it was just one last point in that case, uh, uh, you know, given these new regulatory environment, um, the general sense is that some of the smaller fund houses are better placed. And, you know, we've seen them actually picking up a lot of market share also recently. And we've seen quite a bit of churn actually in that market share space. Uh, therefore, is that your recommendation as well that if people were to start, uh, uh, you know, looking at fresh investments now, perhaps also explore the idea of uh, the smaller funds? See, I think uh, the smaller funds, of course, uh, will have uh, a larger inflow because the commissions payable on the smaller funds could be 40, 30, 40 percent more than the largest funds. So distributor fraternity uh, clearly will start focusing on smaller funds. Uh, but having said which, uh, smaller funds in smaller fund houses uh, could be scary. Uh, so if people go down to buying a, a 20th fund house with a smaller scheme, I would get a little worried. So uh, an investor needs to be more vigilant uh, and, and be more careful when advice is coming to their doorstep uh, because this whole regulation has been in, in investor interest, but can actually be detrimental in certain cases if the advisor is not acting in the best interest. So point one I'm making is you can definitely look at smaller funds because they have the agility, but smaller funds in smaller asset management companies uh, could be too much risk to take at this stage. Uh, and I think you, you best avoid it uh, unless you know that the bull run is back again. All right, uh, with that, let's get to actually answering some of the queries coming in from our viewers. Ravi Teja Pabisetti is on the line with us from Bengaluru. Hi, Ravi, how can we help you? Hi, Sumera. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Tell me. Yeah, I, I think I've emailed uh, my query, mm -hmm. but uh, so the query is that I have two long term goals. Uh, one is for my kids' education and marriage, mm -hmm. and the other one is for my retirement. Okay. And uh, what I've done before uh, even investing is basically put all the checks and balances in place in terms of health insurance, mm -hmm. life insurance, and uh, emergency corpus. Mm -hmm. uh, so these two goals, I've also done uh, planning in a way where I uh, estimated the uh, the goals cost today and then I inflated uh, it for 16, 20 years depending upon the uh, goal horizon. And then I've selected few funds to invest into them. Okay. So I just wanted to know uh, the expert's opinion on uh, whether I've selected the right funds for my goals. Okay, uh, well, Ravi, you've uh, put your retirement date as 2038. That's kind of soon, but uh, still I applaud your uh, planning. Uh, Feroz, you've gone through Ravi's entire portfolio. Um, is it uh, aligned to the goals that he has in mind? What kind of changes would he need? Uh, yes, Sumera, uh, I think I think the portfolio is well designed. Of course, uh, like you rightly pointed out, uh, the objective of retirement at 2038 is a little sooner. Uh, but uh, having said which, uh, 20 years is a long period. Uh, the funds he has chosen are good. Uh, definitely, he needs to, in the new regime, add more multi-caps uh, than just pure large-cap funds. In the multi-cap category, you should look at ABSL uh, equity fund. Uh, uh, so uh, so that's fund, that is a fund which, is, which can actually move from one spectrum of market capitalization to a diametrically opposite end as well. And so delegating, delegating this decision of what kind of companies, what size of companies I think is best done uh, to the fund manager. And I think that can be done uh, with the more flexible mandate of a multi-cap fund. Uh, so ABSL equity could be a good addition to his portfolio. Having said which, I think uh, if you're looking at uh, the retirement and the child's marriage and education as your objective, uh, it's important to also look at if you have a global education objective, uh, get yourself a U.S. feeder fund, Franklin U.S. feeder fund, can help you hedge the rupee uh, exposure uh, because uh, it will get you the dollar exposure and, uh, and, uh, and help you hedge uh, the rupee depreciation which is currently uh, happening.
from uh, Mrs. Anuradha Shrikant. She's written to us from Chennai. So she is a housewife. She's 50 years old. And I'm just going to read out some of her um, aquarium. This is actually very interesting. And this is something that is common to a lot of people. She has an extremely over-diversified uh, portfolio. So more than 20 funds is, uh, I think, what uh, I can see right now. And they're spread across, I mean, you name it, pretty much every other category or sector. Uh, Firoz, I'm not going to read out uh, all of the funds because they pretty much, uh, you know, what some almost 30 schemes are what uh, she has. But you've gone through the portfolio in detail. Uh, what would you think? See, I think, like you rightly pointed out, Sumera, she has about 28 funds, and that's a lot of funds and especially if all of them are investing in equity and that to Indian equity optically she would find more comfort because it is diversified optically but all that money is converging back into the Indian capital markets especially the equity uh, bit so if you had 28 funds from five different country exposures uh, then it's still understandable uh, because the money is truly getting diversified here she would if you if you actually undo the wrapper and see how many stocks she has in the underlying 28 funds it comes upwards of 700 shares so if you have 700 stocks uh, then you practically bought the entire market uh, so beating the market is why you're paying a fee to the fund manager almost two to one half percent so it's important to have a concentrated portfolio not too concentrated not as diversified anuradha and have it optimal to the extent of six to eight funds uh, is point one otherwise the fee you're paying of two to one half percent to get this money managed is going down the drain so that's point one uh, so let me tell her what she can consolidate her money into kotak standard multi-cap mirai asset india equity reliance large cap SBI focused equity, HDFC mid cap opportunities, Franklin India Prima Fund could be the six funds uh, which Anuradha you can consolidate your money, may, will make your life much simpler uh, from a taxation standpoint as, as well. These number of transactions can be a tasking uh, effort uh, to file your taxes. So consolidate into these six funds, especially today uh, when, when there is enough turmoil in the market, market you won't, don't want laggards in your portfolio. Right, that makes sense. Um, up next, uh, we have a query coming in from Rajarshi Majumdar, who's written to us from Bengaluru. Uh, so he as well has investments in multiple funds, but not as many actually, uh, Firoz, as we saw uh, earlier. Uh, he is 42 years old. He is uh, a professional. His schemes are uh, HDFC Small Cap, Axis Focus 25, Axis Blue Chip, Canva Rebecca Blue Chip, and the Mirai Asset Emerging Blue Chip Fund. Uh, is this the right mix for him? And uh, uh, are there any changes, if at all? I think uh, for, for Rajarshi, I think the good news is the two of his funds, which are Access Blue Chip and Access Focused, uh, uh, Focused 25 Fund, are in that list of the least fall. Uh, in fact, Access Blue Chip Fund has least fallen in this calendar year. Uh, and I think uh, that's great that half your money is invested in these two funds. Of course, coming from not a very large fund house, but a smaller fund house. So your schemes are good. Uh, on the debt side, you would want to add Access Credit Risk Fund and Kota Credit Risk Fund. Uh, I think uh, I think HDFC Small Cap and Canada Rebecca Blue Chip is also, are also two good schemes uh, managed by Chirak Setulwad, HDFC Small Cap. Uh, as, uh, in spite of this kind of carnage uh, in the small cap category, I think uh, they have done a decent job to manage risk and curtail downside significantly and the drawdown on the portfolio is uh, lower uh, in certain cases than even a large cap fund for that matter. All right, Feroz, thanks very much for your time this afternoon and thanks for advising our viewers. We need to wrap up on uh, MF Corner for now, at least on the queries front, but there has been a sharp recovery in the market. So what we'll do now is take a quick break. When we come back...